Hello, and welcome to this short video about who keeps are and about the guidance and resources that we produce to support management of safety in practical science. As always, do check the Keeps website for the most up to date version of our resources and guidance. Keeps are a membership organisation who support practical science, DT, and art in schools and colleges. All of our advice and guidance is available to our members through the Keeps website. Our advisors and technicians have many years of classroom teaching and technician experience and are ably supported by our office staff. The vast majority of state and independent schools in England, Wales and Northern Ireland are members of KEEPS. We are funded by your employers, usually your local education authority, academy trust or directly by your school or college. Our ultimate aim is to support all teachers and technicians in providing safe, high quality practical work for students in schools and colleges. The CLEEPS website contains a vast array of advice, guidance and resources and can be accessed at www.cleeps.org.uk. The left hand menu shows the wide range of publications that we produce. We continue to update and develop these year on year. Perhaps the most useful function on the website is the search function highlighted here in yellow. Type in the name of an activity, a concept or a substance that you're interested in and the search function return results in groups of 10. Much of our guidance is tagged, so you will see closely related documents when you click through to a search result. Anyone can search the CLEEPS website, but only those in member organisations can access all of the documents. Speak to your head of science or your technicians for your login details. A good place to start when considering practical work as a new teacher, or perhaps when you've moved to a new school, is our document Health and Safety Induction and Training for Science Teachers, which has the code G238. As mentioned, finding documents is usually quickest by searching the Keeps website for either the document code or the name of the document. You can also search for a keyword or phrase such as induction. G238 has several sections. Section 1 is most appropriate for heads of departments or training organisations. Section 2 provides useful checklists of things that you will need to think about when planning practical activities. For new teachers, these checklists will provide a ready reference when planning your practical work over the first months and years of your career. For more experienced teachers in a new school, this section will provide a reminder of the things that may well have become embedded in your practice, but that you may need to reevaluate in your new school. For example, are all rooms appropriate for all practical activities? Will you need to arrange room spots for certain tasks? Section three details those areas that could be covered in an induction program and lists most of the practical activities that teachers are likely to use. As a new teacher, you could use this as part of your long term planning to ensure that you've tried out all the practicals that you are likely to use before carrying them out to groups of students. As a head of department, you could arrange a series of sessions for your newer teachers to improve their understanding and confidence with practical work. Running a science practical is arguably one of the most complex activities that you will carry out in a school lab. There is much more to think about beyond manipulating the equipment and materials and achieving useful results. Our successful science practical guide, document G30, covers all the aspects that will need to be considered when planning and carrying out practical work. This includes risk assessment, putting in requisitions to technicians, managing the actual lesson, timing of the activity, how equipment is presented to students, how practical instructions are delivered, and the all-important clearing up. The role of demonstration is also discussed, including some advice on how to develop and extend your skills as a demonstrator. The appendix to this document includes a summary table of the practicals and demonstrations that require particular attention and the problems that can occur. Keeps is well known for our advice and guidance on health and safety in science, design and technology and art lessons. Identifying hazards, carrying out a risk assessment and implementing control measures are fundamental parts of enabling students to carry out safe, high quality practical work. We therefore have a wide range of resources available to support this process. Health and safety in the school laboratory and the new science teacher, document PS21, provides a useful overview of the health and safety environment in schools, teachers' legal responsibilities, and an outline process for carrying out risk assessment. This is a short document that provides a useful starting point for the further guidance that can be found in other documents. A particularly useful section in PS21 is the discussion of the distinction between hazards and risks. Shown in this table are some examples of objects, substances or activities that can be hazardous and that can cause harm to people or the environment. The risk depends both on the likelihood of harm occurring and the severity of that harm. 
Our document, Making and Recording Risk Assessments in School Science, PS90, goes into much more detail for teachers. The document starts with the discussion of the key legislation, including the Health and Safety at Work Act, 1974, and the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations, 2002, often referred to as COSH. The role and responsibility of the employer and the employee are discussed. Employers are required to assess risks associated with the substances used and the activities carried out within their organisations and to make a record of the significant findings. Employers can make use of model risk assessments, sometimes referred to as generic risk assessments. Employees, in this case teachers and technicians, are required to follow those risk assessments. One of the most important functions of CLEAPS is to provide its members with up-to-date guidance, including model risk assessments. When planning an activity, teachers and technicians should start with the guidance or model risk assessments provided by their employer, then adapt as required to fit the specific context of the activity. For example, teachers will need to consider the characteristics of the class, the availability of equipment, the time of day, etc. There may also be local rules that override model risk assessments. For example, dissection of whole animals, such as rats, is allowed, subject to risk assessment. However, a school may have a local rule in place preventing this activity from being carried out. The process of risk assessment can be summarised by the flow diagram shown here on the left. Once the hazards have been identified and the risks have been assessed, control measures designed to minimise the risks are put in place. Examples of possible control measures include using less hazardous substances, reducing concentrations or voltages used, ensuring the students are well trained in a technique, and the use of personal protective equipment, such as safety glasses. Two examples of how to record the outcome of your risk assessment are found in the annex to document G271. For example, annotation of a practical method sheet that will be used in a classroom, or notes written in a teacher's planner that is regularly referred to. The key point is that the control measures are recorded in such a way that they will be referred to close in time to the start of the practical activity, and therefore will be adopted during the practical activity. When considering what control measures to use, it can be helpful to consider what is called the hierarchy of controls, something referred to in the original COSH regulations. Simply described, some control measures will be more effective than others. The inverted pyramid diagram here indicates the relative effectiveness of different types of control measure. For example, if we don't use or eliminate a hazardous substance, then it cannot cause any harm. This is therefore the most effective control measure. Benzene provides a good example of this. Substituting one substance for another is a commonly used control measure in science practicals. For example, rather than using the toxic substance phenol, we can use the less hazardous methyl hydroxypentamate. Reducing concentrations of solutions to the minimum required to provide the expected outcome is another example of this. Engineering controls are used to isolate people from the hazard. This is commonly found in design and technology departments, where guards are used with powered cutting tools. In a science lab, fume cupboards and safety screens are commonly used to isolate us from hazardous substances. Administrative controls, or changes to the way people work, is next in the hierarchy. Training students to work safely is a significant part of administrative controls in a school science lab. For example, training them in proper techniques for lighting a Bunsen burner or pouring out chemicals. Finally, when all other options have been considered and implemented where practicable, comes the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE. This provides a barrier between the hazard and the body. The most common example of PPE found in school science labs are eye protection and very occasionally gloves. CLEAP's practical guidance embeds many of these control measures, making the activities intrinsically safe to carry out and aims to avoid the need for PPE wherever possible. Part of the general risk assessment for a science lab will be the discussion and acceptance of a set of lab rules by all those present, adults and children alike. CLEAPs have a lab rules poster, document GL248, available as a Word document, which can be therefore adapted, for example, including a school's name and logo. Having a set of agreed rules in all of the school's labs is a powerful method for helping students to learn and accept that their behaviour has to be different in labs compared with other school rooms, such as in maths or in history. The main source of model risk assessments for chemical substances are the has cards. Each card covers a particular substance or group of substances. The cards are two-sided and contain a wealth of information. The front side of each card contains information more usually useful to technicians and includes information on the hazard warnings for the purest form of the substance, for example, the solid or the concentrated solution. 
Information about how to store materials is included along with emergency information. The reverse side of each card provides information for the ranges of concentrations that the substances will be used at. Here we can see information about hydrochloric acid at three different concentration ranges, showing that the solution becomes less hazardous as the concentration decreases. The suggested user column indicates the cleach recommendation with the minimum age or experience required when using these solutions. The user categories are year seven, year nine, year 12, and teacher technician. Suggested general control measures and guidance is then given, which commonly includes wearing of eye protection, use of ventilation or fume covers, and avoidance of contact with skin as appropriate. Some brief practical notes are included, although most of this information is now available in other documents. See the separate video titled Introduction to Keep Support for Practical Science for further information. Given the wealth of information contained in the HASCARDS, we have produced a guidance document called About HASCARDS, Document Code GL120, which helps with the interpretation of the information. Section C gives a discussion of how the HASCARDS are arranged and full details of the meanings of all the terminology. GL120 also includes information on how to deal with emergencies, how to safely dispose of chemicals and personal protective equipment, amongst much else. GL120 also includes information on how to deal with emergencies, how to safely dispose of chemicals and personal protective equipment, amongst much else. One special set of HAS cards are called the Emergency Cards or E-Cards. These will make a useful addition to the walls of every science lab, containing summary information on how to handle emergencies. Also included are the immediate response measures. These are measures that anyone can carry out in an emergency before a first aid arrives. Such emergencies include burns, cuts, electric shocks, and exposure to chemicals. GL120 also includes a description of the chemical hazard warning symbols now used globally. CLP is the European Union and Great Britain implementation of the global system, and you will see reference to CLP in many other CLEPS documents. This section of GL120 provides a description of the meaning of each of these symbols. This could provide a ready reference source for you and the basis for activities designed to introduce students to these symbols. A question sometimes asked by teachers is whether they can share house cards with students, especially when the students are carrying out their own risk assessments as part of their courses. House cards are not designed for students, so therefore should not be supplied to students. However, students have an excellent range of safety information documents designed specifically for students called the student safety sheets. Here you can see a comparison of student safety sheet 20 and HASCARD 47A, which are both about hydrochloric acid. The student safety sheet provides enough information on hydrochloric acid to allow students to risk assess an activity. SSS020 then goes further, providing guidance and questions to help prompt students in their thinking about risk assessment. What kind of control measures could they consider? How will they assess the risks? What action should be taken in an emergency? The student safety sheets cover many of the substances, materials and activities that students will encounter in biology, chemistry and physics activities. There are also sheets on techniques such as working with DNA, fieldwork and heating substances. As I hope you can see, CLEPS offers a diverse range of guidance and resources. CLEPS is here to help you, whether you are an early career teacher, a technician or a head of department. If you can't find what you're looking for, or you would like to talk through an idea or a problem, contact us by email, via the website or on the phone. We normally respond to help phone requests within two working days. If your query is urgent, then contacting us by phone is the best route. Thank you for watching this video.